Good afternoon and welcome as we worship the Lord together today. I'm so glad that you're able to join us as we are doing our Wednesday Bible study. I do have a few announcements and things that I'd like for you to uh, keep in mind. Um, I do want to remind our church family about the things that are coming up. Uh, we are excited about going back to our regular services. We're right now having our regular morning worship service at 11 o'clock, and then we're going to have our Sunday evening service at 6, so please make plans to be there for that. We're really excited about that, and we're hoping to begin our Sunday school back uh, the first Sunday of June, so we're looking forward to that as well. Um, hopefully, um, we're going to be having our a homecoming the end of May and so we're looking forward to brother Don Long coming to share with us and uh, what a blessing it's going to be to have brother Don and Miss Nora with us. We're also uh, looking at Vacation Bible School coming up in June so it's uh, we've got some great and exciting things coming up and uh, one of the other things that uh, I'm looking forward to is May the 9th we're going to be celebrating a baby dedication so uh, we're really excited about that opportunity for our church family as well so uh, May the 9th we'll be having a baby dedication so make note and be here for those uh, those times uh, we do have several that we want to remember in prayer and uh, those that are on our prayer list those that are recuperating from surgery Amanda Hughes uh, and also Carolyn Hester and remember them in prayer. Uh, we've also brought up Greg Patterson on that list as well. Greg is uh, scheduled to have a kidney surgery, and so is a church family. Be lifting up Greg in prayer. Uh, for those that are uh, just having some health concerns, lift up Sharon Parks in prayer. Miss Sharon has had COVID, and uh, she is doing better, she said today. And so we just keep praising the Lord for her improvement, and we just want to keep lifting her up in prayer. Uh, we've also uh, got on our prayer list Tracy Edwards and Taylor Browning, Brother Harold, Miss Pam Bryant, Rhonda Nickel, Jeff Langley, and um, Jeff will be having a procedure coming up. We're just uh, waiting on them to set those dates. He's just been having a terrible time with his back and hips, so be in prayer for Jeff. And also David Neal. David is the uh, nephew of Miss Vicki Peters, and he has uh, had some heart issues and uh, pneumonia and along with some kidney problems as well. So as a church family, be lifting up David. Uh, and our those that we have that are battling cancer, uh, lift up Brother Dillard more in prayer. Brother Dillard scheduled to have surgery on the 28th of April, so be praying for him. Willard Moore, Amy Tillman, Walter Waddell. Uh, we also have Kenneth Clayton, Arnold Cagley, and I appreciate your prayers from my brother Greg. Greg had his uh, seventh chemo, uh, I guess it was yesterday, and so he has one more left, and they're going to do a scan and hopefully schedule some surgery um, and maybe do some radiation in there as well. So as a church family, I appreciate your prayers for him. We've got several I know that we've mentioned, and I know that you've got some on your heart that we haven't mentioned. So uh, as a church family, I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for the privilege that we have to join together. Even though we're not able to be together in person, Lord, we are able to join together in worship. And I pray that you just may bless our hearts and minds through your word. And Lord, help us as we uh, do the best that we can to serve you and others. And Lord, I just pray that you just may uh, encourage us through the work, God, that we're able to see your hand upon us and see you move. And God, I pray that you just add to us as only you, you can do. And Father, as you see fit in, in our church, that you just may continue to have your blessings upon us. Thank you, Father, for those that are willing to do and those that just have a heart to serve you. And God, I pray that you just may lead us and direct us. Lord, help us to have that heart that goes out and leads others to a lost and dying, uh, those in a lost and dying world that we lead them to Jesus. Lord, help us to have that kind of heart that we can love them to Christ. Lord, I pray that today that you might be with us, help us as we study, and we thank you for all that you do in Jesus name. Amen. So today, uh, if I could title the, the lesson today, it would be a happy heart. And a happy heart is a, a heart that um, it, I'm not saying that it doesn't ever get down or or maybe we don't suffer loss and sometimes that we um, we have times that we have grieved and sometimes that we uh, we have times that that we hurt but a happy heart is a heart that continually seeks after the joy of the Lord and so uh, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17 uh, this is a passage of scripture that I, I absolutely love because it deals with with our heart it says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Uh, again, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. 
I, it seems like um, whenever I go to the doctor, the doctor decides they want to, they just want to put me on all sorts of different medicines. Uh, I've got uh, two or three different things that I'm taking for something. And uh, the other day I went to the doctor and uh, just for uh, blood work. And then they call me and say, well, the doctor wants to put you on a cholesterol pill. And I thought, well, I didn't know I needed a cholesterol pill. My cholesterol's always been really good. And and then I got to thinking after she gave me that medicine, I went and picked it up, and, and I, I'm reading all the things it'll do to you. And I'm thinking, I don't think I want that. I don't think, you know, all these side effects, I don't think I want to try that. And then I got to thinking, they didn't even do a lipid panel on me. They didn't even know what my cholesterol had done. Why am I taking all this medicine? Why do they want to give it to you? And so I, I, I got to thinking about the medicine. Well, the Bible says that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. There was a guy that I've known for many years, and I just dearly love him now. He has had a lot of difficulty in his life. He's had a lot of loss. He's had a lot of hurt, a lot of heartache. But he always, whenever you see this guy, he's got a smile on his face. As a matter of fact, he has come and visited even here at, at Laurel Bluff since we've been here. Good friend of mine for many, many years. Uh, when Crystal and I got married, they came to our wedding. And they're just some of the sweetest folks in the world. And I asked him, he, he, in all the hardship that he had in his life, he, he said this, he said, happiness is a choice and I choose to be happy. And that's what his, his, his statement to me was, happiness is a choice and I choose to be happy. And I thought, what a, what a thought now, about my outlook on things. You know, I've noticed that if I'm grumpy, then my kids are grumpy and sometimes it'll make Crystal grumpy. And sometimes, you know, I, I, you know, even though I'm not trying to be grumpy, I can find myself being that way. Um, and sometimes some of the medicines that I take sometimes will make me grumpy. Uh, and so uh, that's what that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So uh, I can blame it on that. But but, you know, my outlook on on things really make it, it. It does have an impact on those that are around me. It impacts my family. If I go in early in the morning and turn on the lights and say, you all get out of bed and I'm kind of grumpy. I, guess what's going to happen to my kids? They're going to have a bad day. I've uh, I've got to tell you, when uh, when I, I served, the Lord uh, allowed me to serve as a uh, counselor to a boy's home. And it was a boys that had been in trouble with the law, boys that had um, had been in juvenile detention and so the courts would sentence these boys to these these treatment facilities and and I was a counselor at one of these treatment facilities and and I noticed that when the morning time would come I, I would watch some of the the boys and um, there was a guy that filled in for me when when I had my days off there but as when I would get there I'd turn on the light and I'd say good morning fellas everybody get up and let's get going and I have a real positive attitude with them I noticed that those kids had a good day and then I would see where there were people that would come in and there was a day in particular that uh, they had pulled me aside for some kind of training or something that we were doing. And the guy that, that filled in for me, I watched him and he jumped up and he flipped the lights on and said, y'all get out of the bed. And he was real grumpy and, and barking orders at him. And, and I watched those kids that had such a great day and, and they functioned so well, just collapse and fall apart. And, and I, I thought, you know, my outlook makes a big difference. The way I treat others and the way I come across to others, it makes a big difference. Uh, it impacts my family. It'll impact my children, impact my wife. Uh, my outlook will impact my work. It'll impact the quality of my work. And it also will impact the quantity of my work and what I really get done um, and, and how good that I do it. Uh, my outlook, if I'm grumbling about having to do something, um, it, it's... I don't get much done. Uh, somebody was laughing the other day about talking about their kids and you say, you know, I tell them to pick up 30 toys out of the, their floor in their bedroom and it takes them three hours uh, to pick up those little toys and get them, you know, they're all grumping and moaning and groaning the whole time they're doing it. And they said, but I can scatter 80 Easter eggs out in the yard and they're gone in 20 seconds. You know, they just run and pick them up real quick. And I said, if you would just do the same thing when I tell you to pick up your toys. Well, it's the outlook. And that's what it is. It's it's the outlook of of picking up things and, and cleaning up things. And um, we always had a game, and I would I would say whoever could pick up the most, I must set a timer, and whoever could pick up the most gets a prize. And so it, you know it never failed. Everybody would tie and get the prize. So, um, but that was this the the making the the change of of the thoughts, uh, making making the outlook 
um, a positive thing. Um, it impacts our work uh, when we have a negative outlook. It impacts the way we treat others. Uh, it really does. Uh, when we are negative about things and when we allow our hearts to be brought down by the, the hard things in life, uh, instead of choosing to be happy and instead of making that choice to say, Lord, uh, I'm going to do the best. I'm going to compliment somebody. I'm going to look for ways to be kind. I'm going to do the things that I can do to make somebody else's day better. Uh, instead of doing those things, uh, when we're down, it, it impacts the way we treat others. Um, instead of treating them kindly, sometimes we're impatient. And so uh, our outlook is a reflection of our heart. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And so it leads us to that second part, that happy heart. It, it changes the situations from, um, it, it diffuses bad situations uh, many times when we have that happy heart. Uh, I had a guy that, uh, you know, it's hard to fuss at somebody when you're kind to them. Um, and, and to say, oh, okay, I'm sorry if that happened to you. Let me let me see what we can do to fix it. And, and that seems to make body, uh, others feel good. When I worked in customer service, I had a guy that uh, he would call in, and, and I was new in customer service in that department, and I had just received uh, just received uh, that guy's, uh, that salesperson's uh, group there. And, and the lady that had trained me told me, she said, oh, you'll get a call from this customer, and he's always negative, and he's always grumpy, and he's always this and that. And I said, well, that'll be okay. I'll, I'll take you when he calls. And sure enough, it wasn't but a day or so later, he called, oh, and it just went just on and on and on. And, and so finally, I just said, oh, I am so sorry that that happened to you. Let, let's find your problem, and let me get it fixed for you, because uh, you don't need to be calling in here uh, and taking time out of your work when I can fix your problem quickly. And so what I tried to do was try to defuse the situation and, and make him uh, feel like he was being taken care of. Sometimes that's what people people need to hear. They need to hear that they're loved, uh, that they're heard. And so it's for us as Christians, sometimes we hear uh, the problems of others. And we're able to uh, end that, that happy heart of, of our life, instead of being um, immediately defensive and, and go into a, a rage back at him, um, that we would respond in a way that would be God honoring and say, well, let's see what we can do to help you. If there's something that I can do personally, if there's something that I can encourage you through, because many times folks that are in those bad situations, uh, they lash out at anybody that will listen. And sometimes finding someone that really cares makes a difference and it gets through to them. A happy heart changes situations. It also changes uh, the outlook on life. It changes others' outlook on life because they see, well, you know, there's something different about that person. Even though they go through the same hardships and difficulties that I do, there's something different about them. And that's something that I want in my life. And it gives us then the opportunity to witness. I went over, uh, even just early this morning, I got up and uh, went over to Lowe's because I needed to get some, some mulch. And so I'm... Um, get over to the, the mulch place and the guy that uh, was in front of me, he had parked and, and they were loading a whole bunch of stuff. So I pulled to the side and, and so I moved uh, Once I realized that they were going to load his from the side, I pulled my vehicle up some more. And uh, then uh, when they set this guy's load in on his little bitty trailer, his, his tires went almost flat uh, back on that little trailer. And so I backed my car up. I have one of them little, um, them little pumps and tire pressure pump things that uh, I bought and I said here I got one of these we'll just hook it up and we pump up your tire real quick and and so I pulled up beside him tried to help him out and so uh, we got him all all squared away and then I pulled up to get my little bit of mulch and the guy that uh, that that was loading me he asked me he said do I know you from somewhere and and I, I said well I don't know I, I didn't recognize him but but as we got to talking, I found out he was a Christian, and I invited him to church and, and encouraged him to come. And, and as we, we visited, it was, it was such a, um, his outlook was different. Uh, he was kind of grumpy at first, but then once he, he realized uh, that he could talk to somebody that was a Christian, it, it seemed to make a difference. And I had the opportunity to witness to him right there in the Lowe's parking lot. You see, our, our heart will change the outlook on others' thoughts of life, too. Um, the Bible says it's it's like a medicine, uh, that it, it heals those the sick, um, when in those sick times and those those dark times that that a happy heart heals that um, that sickness sometimes of our soul. You know the Bible tells us, and this is something that um, that we can 
can know that God wants us to be happy. Uh, that's something that I think we can all take as a truth in our heart and a truth in our life, to know that God wants us to find that happiness. He wants us to, to have that joy. He wants us to live in that. And, and so scripture tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, it says this, Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with merry heart. For God hath now accepted thy works. For God now accepteth thy works. That we can have a, a heart that's full of joy. Um, and you know, when, when we're joyful, you don't hide that. That's something that comes out in your life. You, uh, you can't help but, but allow that to be on display. Because when, when you truly have a joyful heart, you're able to, uh, to bring that smile to someone else's face. You know, I, I wear that mask whenever I'm out. And you can't see a whole lot. But you know, when you smile at somebody, your eyes tell all the difference. And, and when you're able to smile and say good morning or, or whatever, even though that you've got a mask on, uh, folks, they, uh, I had a guy the other day that just uh, he smiled back I could see it in his mask you know you can see the the mask move up and down and he said well good morning to you um, and that's something this is this time that we've been in has has done to us it's hidden our faces and we've all been behind a mask we've all been um, got behind this this facade where uh, others can't see our face and, and what that does is it, it robs us of being able to, to show kindness and, and to give those smiles and to show the joy that's in our life. And instead of just, just smiling, that we have that opportunity of speaking to others to try to be an encouragement to them. That we can see that God wants us to be happy. Uh, the Bible tells us, for God not accepteth thy works. When we come to know Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior, we have that knowledge that this is as bad as anything will ever be. Uh, we will never have a moment that will be worse than anything that happens on this earth. That once we get to heaven, it's just going to get better all the time. And so the closer we get, the happier we should be. And the more joy that we can have in our heart and life. Because we know that we're one day closer to seeing our Savior face to face. And hear those words, well done my good and faithful servant. Enter to the joy of thy Lord. That you and I can find that happiness because of who Jesus is. Jesus loves us so much. He cares about you. And I'm so thankful that he cares about me, that he wants to use me, even though I have fallen and even though that I have failed so many times in my life, he still loves me. And that's such a wonderful thing to know. God loves you. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to, to have that joy in your heart and in your life. Now, if you're watching today and you've never invited Jesus into your heart to be your Savior and Lord, that's the first step to a happy heart, to come to know Jesus, to experience him, to find forgiveness for your sins and begin a new life. That's how the Bible tells us that we can begin a new life in Christ Jesus, that all the old things, they're passed away. And all we can do is look forward to the things that are new, that God gives us a new purpose. He And he has a plan for our life and that you and I can serve him and with a happy, joyous heart that we can find forgiveness. And so not only that we, we come to know him as a Savior and Lord, that's our first step. But the second part of that is if you're a Christian, there's sometimes we allow this world to drag us down. And instead of having that happiness that shines out, sometimes we're too often drugged down by the world and all the bad news that goes on around us. But we can look forward to the day when when God's going to take care of all of those uh, those negative things that have happened, that we'll be with him, and uh, we'll never have to worry about those things. That you and I can look forward to eternity with a great joy in our heart, and that we do so um, as a witness, as we encourage others in Christ as well. I look forward, if you're able to be here to join us Sunday to worship with us, I look forward to seeing you. We had such a wonderful worship this past Sunday, and I'm so thankful that for those that were able to be here and for the singing, and oh, it was just so wonderful to be able to see one another and to hear the laughter uh, again as we're all joined back together. Uh, we're going to worship together at 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. on Sunday morning, and then uh, we're looking forward to our Sunday night service at 6. So if you're able to join us for Sunday night service, come at 6 o'clock so we can worship then as well. And then, our, of course, our Wednesday night services will be here online. So I look forward to seeing you. If you're able, come join us Sunday as we worship. May the Lord bless you with a great happy day.